So we have to rely on a complex technique that is based on getting the neurons that participate in the formation of the memory to express a molecule that will act as a switch when a light in the form of a laser hits these uh, switches. They turn on and they make the neurons fire. An important thing here is not just the lasers, it's the fact that we uh, target the switch to the very neurons that participate in the formation of the memory and not other neurons around them. So once we have that tool available, we can label the neurons that participate in the formation of a memory and then drive them artificially somewhere else. We see these mice recalling the original memory. Now, what we've done in this study is go a step further and trick these neurons by making them fire at the wrong time. There's this uh, concept in neuroscience that neurons that fire together at the same time bind together, they connect and form connections between each other. And we do see that now the neurons that once used to produce an aversive response, now after the switch, now the same neurons that once used to drive fear, now they drive pleasure. So by just flicking a switch in the brain, you managed to change what should have been a positive experience for the mouse into a scary one. Yeah, we can go both from a positive association to a negative one, and we can go from the negative to the positive. Why are the two so closely linked in the brain? The area of the brain where we can achieve the switch, called the hippocampus, the neurons in that area can associate with whichever emotion is available. The emotional neurons are so close together that one set of neurons can plug to one or another. These uh, fear neurons and these pleasure neurons are intermingled. They are all in the same structure, and it depends on where they project to in the brain that one emotion or the other is produced. How have you been manipulating mice in this way? So in this study, we did not use a single drug. Everything that we have changed, we have changed artificially from within the brain. We've gone inside the brain, found the circuits, and by activating them and forcing certain pools of neurons to become active, we have been able to link up the neurons with the emotion. Without using drugs, how did you change their brain? We let the brain tell us through a technology called optogenetics which neurons participate in the formation of a memory. Once those neurons are labeled with a, this tool that we use constantly, this switch that can turn the neurons on when light is shining onto this switch, then without drugs, we just uh, use fiber optics that go into the brain of the mice. Those fiber optics drive light into the brain and activate the neurons without needing to inject any compound into the body of the mouse. So what kind of applications could this have? The study has many applications, and we do have mental disorders or pathologies in neuroscience where the associations between a trigger, a cue, are too strongly connected to an emotion, and this can incapacitate the human and produce some sort of a post-traumatic stress disorder where, where the emotion associated to, to a memory is too strong. In order to minimize or reduce the strength, we have multiple areas to target, and our study shows where we should aim when trying to revert the effects of these strong associations.